Father, we thank you for this another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. Thank you, Lord, that revelation and knowledge will flow freely, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. And Father, I pray that you will speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind. None of me and all of you, it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Would you give the Lord a big hand clap before you take your seats? Amen. You can be seated. And if you have your Bibles, go with me to the book of John chapter 1. We are looking at the Gospel of John. And last week we talked about the Mosaic Law versus uh, the grace that came by Jesus. And so tonight what we're going to talk about um, we're going to talk about continue that grace and truth and see what that's about. Now, uh, in this series, we're, 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 we're going to stick with the word, just textbook. It's just so many amazing pieces that um, we need to really look at and, and talk about, and I think it'll be a blessing to you. St. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 9, and he says here, in the beginning was the word. Now, I'm going to challenge how we've been reading, okay? Uh, you know, sometimes we get an explanation of something and we just stick with that forever and we say, well, that's just what that means. And I'm, I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit will take you deeper. Uh, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. Now, here's the thing that should get our attention. And the word was God. Now, this is in the beginning. This is before we called him Jesus. We see something in the book of Genesis when, um, when, when the Spirit of the Lord <clears throat> showed up in Genesis right when he was getting ready to sacrifice his son. You know, where was Jesus before he was put into a human body and called Jesus, you see? Um, the triune existed, but I want you to, I want you to go just a little deeper with this, not to bring about any confusion, but you're going to have a really big understanding of why Jesus, why Jesus was the only one that could give us grace and truth. Moses couldn't give it to us. No other man on the planet, any, no, nobody that was created could give it to us. Jesus was the only one that qualified to give us grace and truth. And so I, I paused here today. I really had to take a break. I was like looking at this and I was like, I was so blown away. I, I, didn't, know, I didn't know what to do with this information. So I said, let's go to Bible study and, and share it with you guys, you know? He said, the word was God. So that's before we knew him as Jesus. We know eventually this is gonna be Jesus. The word was God, verse two. He says, the same was in the beginning with God. The word that was God, it was, was in the beginning with God. Yeah. Uh, verse 3, all things were made by the word that is God and the word that was with God. All things were made by him and subtract him. Without him was not anything made that was made. So you can never include him with the created. Karabasha I felt that thing, boy. Let me, let me, let me come. You can't include him with the created. He, he's not created. But all of creation came through him. And without him, you ain't got nothing. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Verse 4, in him, now this is part I want you to get. In him was life. <laughs> He breathed into the nostrils of man the breath of life, 
and man became a living soul. But the life was in him. He wasn't the created. He had the ability to be responsible for everything that's created, both seen stuff and unseen stuff. Okay? In him was life, and the life that was in him was the light of men. The life in him now breathed into the nostrils of a man became light to a man. Five. And the light shineth in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. Real quick, look at ver that verse in the NLT, and then we'll go back to the King James. In look at this in NLT, uh, John, uh, St. John 1, 5. He says, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. The light shined in, in the darkness, and the dark it can never be... It can never be extinguished. Now, think about this now. Uh, you cannot kill the, a spirit. You, you, once life has been given unto you, it can't be extinguished. It can exist in one realm or another, but it can't be extinguished. And that's why I look at church folks. It's like, dude, do you realize how much you don't know? I had, a, I had a, a moment this morning where I, where I just thought, I, I, it, everything I've ever thought I knew, everything I thought I understood remains to be seen once I leave this physical body and return to the creator <laughs> of all creation, both seen and unseen. You don't even know how that's going to take place. We think, well, you're going to die and you're in heaven. You, do you understand what happens? The body is like a container. What happens when you take the top off of a container? What happens when, when what's in the container comes out? Woo, this is going to be, this is going to be outstanding. And while I'm at it, spend at least 30 minutes a day praying in tongues over the next six months and you're going to be all right. Stuff crazy right now. 30 minutes a day praying in tongues. So whether you believe it or not, pray in tongues. Okay? See, so if you have to sit there and say, yabba dabba do, yabba dabba do, you just pray in tongues. <laughs> the light shines in darkness, and, and, and the darkness can never extinguish it. Whew. All right, go back to King James in, in, in verse 6. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Now, he's not talking about the John that's writing this epistle. He's talking about John the Baptist. So there was a man sent from God whose name was John, referring to John the Baptist. The same John the Baptist came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He's the carrier of life. He's the carrier of light. He can impact all men who believe. All right, watch this, verse 8. He was not that light, John said, I'm, John says I'm not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. I, want, I need to see this. All right, now, verse 9, almost there. That was the true light, which which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. The true life light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. And then verse 14, skip on down John 1, 14. And the Word was made flesh. Now stop right there. Are you serious? This amazing, infinite being that is not in the category of the created, mm. that everything that was created came through him, he took a demotion into 
a flesh body. He who created creation stepped into it. Yeah. 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 Let, let, me, let me give this. I was, oh, I was, oh, maybe nine, ten years old. I was a member of uh, Mount Zion AME Church. My pastor was uh, Reverend Dunlap. And we were having, you remember the summer Bible school thing that they, mom, your mom used to make you go to? And, and, and uh, so he was outside and we were talking and I asked him a question. I asked my mom a question. She said, ask Reverend Dunlap. I asked Reverend Dunlap. I said, I said, now, if I got a father and my father got a father and his father got a father, who's God's father? And Reverend Dunlap said, and he says, you know, uh, yeah, you know the, most of the answer to that during that time was, you know, God works in mysterious ways. <laughs> and I was, uh, I was praying, and just out of nowhere, God said, would you like to know the answer to that question you asked years ago? I said, oh, yes. And he said to me, you're trying to relate to God like his creations relate to one another. <laughs> he created the system of a father having a father having a father. You can't see him in what he's created. Don't try to put him in the same uh, process as what he's created. But he loved his creation so much, he reduced himself from the creator to dwell amongst his creation. And the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us so we could behold his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, and he showed up in flesh full of grace and full of truth. It's not grace one piece, truth another piece. You can't separate grace and truth. Grace is the truth. They, they, they'll always go together, all right? So I need you to see who Jesus is. I think sometimes we... Um, we reduce him down because of his love for us to take on flesh so he can deliver grace and truth. There's nobody else that could, could, could deliver eternal grace. Nobody. Nobody qualified to be full of grace and truth. And if you believe in him, notice what it says, Believe that he's the Christ. That's uh, St. John chapter, the uh, last chapter, 20, I think, verse 30, 31. Believe that he is the Christ. Believe he's the Son of God. And believing you'll have life. And you'll have it eternally. Just by believing, you'll have life. Now, I'm, I'm looking at this today, and I'm, I'm thinking I ain't going to finish this teaching today because I'm probably going to get stuck in it. I think we'll get a little bit more in being, but I need you to pause a little bit and recognize who you dealing with. You're not dealing with Jesus, just a man. You're dealing with God and his glory, full of grace, that he had to take a earth suit to deliver the package. And I'll show you tonight that this book of John speaks of the deity of Christ more than any writing in the Bible. And Jesus says stuff like, the, the Father and I, God and I are one. What would you think, seriously, what would you think if I got up here one and they said, uh, I'm God and he me. Y'all like, stone that joker. That's exactly what they did. Because ain't nobody hearing that. They're not hearing that. That his love was so awesome, he had to get an earth suit to deliver 
grace and truth to you and me. And that grace and truth through believing would be eternal. Ooh, Lord have mercy. That just blows my mind. And so he says, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, you're going to have to take this home and dwell on it a little bit, or you'll continue to diminish the greatness of what we have. We have the God of creation who created stuff you can see and stuff you can't see, my God, who took an earth suit to deliver a package. The law came by Moses. Moses couldn't deliver grace. Who can you think of that could have delivered this, this, this un, it's even bigger than unmerited favor. Who could deliver this glory to man? So that's what I'm saying. When you leave this body, all this little church stuff that's going on, our little church thing, you know, little church thing, little, little programs we make, the little stuff we do, the little songs we make, you don't even have a clue to the fact that once you stand before the one who created you, you, you will stand in perfect knowledge, perfect wisdom. You, uh, you get to, I, I, I doubt if you can hardly go remember anything because it's just going to all, being in his presence is going to burn stuff and wash the, you, it ain't, it, you, you will now be aware of all of the greatness that was imparted in you that was diminished because you had an earth suit. Now, I know every, I knew tonight that everybody wasn't going to understand what I was saying. But at least you got a chance to see how excited I am about what I'm saying. And we're going to be working on this through this series. And, and so in my head, I thought, I cannot just look at the Son of Man. And I got to be careful at looking at just the Son of God. I now have to look at the Word in the beginning that was God who created principalities, powers, yeah. Yeah. spiritual realm, physical realm, and that awesomeness took on an earth suit. I used to like wonder, why you been hanging around 70 years? I don't think that the body of Jesus could have held it that long. Mm -mm. And that's why it changed. He put on his glory suit. That's a lot of glory packed in that. Whew. I got some other things I can say about that, but I'm going to leave that alone. All right. Now, so what we're going to do here is we're going to talk about, <clears throat> you, I've used this word before. I think I've set you up with this word called preeminence. I want you to get the definition of preeminence because that's the, the first thing that's got to be established before you can really take hold of this grace is you've got to establish the preeminence and the glory of Jesus Christ. Preeminence is the fact of surpassing all others. When something is preeminent, it is superior above all. It is superior above all people. It is superior above all things. It is superior and on a level above everything. That, that it's, it, there is no competition. There is nothing to compare to it. It stands alone when it is preeminent. It is, it is superior and above all. So it's necessary to understand his preeminence, not only over Moses, okay? And people did that. They, they, they always try to compare Jesus with Moses and the law. And I'm showing you, there ain't none. Ain't none. Ain't not, what Moses gave was something that was written on stone, and yet that just kind of was a symbol of ain't no life in it. <laughs> Moses couldn't deliver this life. The law couldn't deliver this life. And so this preeminence had to be understood over Moses and in all things in order to understand the greatness and the fullness of grace. And so the Gospel of John is devoted to setting forth this preeminence. And as we study the whole book of John, you're going to see it over and over again 
begin to establish there is nothing even near the level <laughs> of the Word that took on flesh to deliver a package. So in chapter 1, John chapter 1, verse 1 through 4, I'm going to read it again. In the beginning was the what? Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. And notice he said, all things were made by Him. In Him was life. And the life was the light of men. So, please hear me now. The Word is far more than a revelation of God. See, we, 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 want, we want to stick the Word here. No, 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 we're not talking about the Word, something that you read that is a revelation of God. The Word is very God. He is very God. He's not just revelation of God. He is very God. Why am I saying it like that? Because he, he ain't no just no, I read this and I got a revelation. What he's referring to here is God. I need to calm, calm down. I am about really ready to fly. He is not a creature, but the one by whom all things were created. Colossians 1.16, uh, King James. Look what he says, Colossians 1.16, my Lord. He says, um, Colossians 1.16, for by him were all things created. Now, this is awesome. All things were created in heaven by him and that are in earth all by him. Visible things you can see all by him. Invisible things you can't see all by him. Whether they be thrones all by him. Dominions, created all by him. Principalities, created all by him. Or powers, created all by him. So in no book is there found a stronger claim for the deity. What do I mean by that? Deity, the one true God in human form. The, one, the deity of Christ, the one true God in human, in, let me say, the one true God wearing an earth suit. And it's very clear here uh, in this book of John, and I want us to take the time to look at this. This is, this is a very, very interesting things that Jesus said here. Uh, I'll look at some of them twice because they're so amazing. Uh, look at chapter 8, verse 46, and then while you're in chapter 8, let's look at verse 56. Jesus, and then you understand why he said, talked the way he talked. He said, which of you convinces me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? This, this, is, this, is, this is pretty cool. Um, verse 47, let's read that. He that is of God heareth God's word. You therefore hear them not because you're not of God. Verse 48. Then answereth the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil. That's what they thought. That's what they thought. Look at verse 58. John 8, 58. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham... See, they, get, they go around talking about Abraham. He said, before Abraham, I am. I was. Before Abraham was... You, you got to understand what he was saying. He, what he's saying was, I never was. I've always am. I, I can't be contained by time. I, 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 time is my creation. Mm. But I ain't in it. God didn't come out of time. Time came out of God. So before Abraham was, I am. Yeah, Lord, thank you. I, I need you to see the awesomeness of the one that delivered the package. Grace and truth. Now look at uh, John uh, ten thirty. Look at what look at what he said ten thirty. I, you know, we we think we have to be careful. Somehow we thought Jesus was this like byproduct of God. 
No, he like he a piece of them. All right, watch this. Look what he said in verse 30. I and my father are what? One. One. Again, a lot of things are said in a word to help us to try to, from a creation point, try to understand uh, what is so challenging to really gain the full capacity of him with your finite mind. You're trying to understand infinite with finite. And infinite has preeminence over finite. So how can I communicate something to the creations about my timeless, uh, infinite self? <laughs> Glory to God. So he said, I and my father, we won. We won. Yeah, but, but, but Abraham, no, when Ab Abraham was, I am. <laughs> It's amazing. And then you have the creation trying to instruct the creator. It humbled me today. I was like, dude, don't even ever try it. He is God all by himself. And this is what the Lord was saying to me that day when I started walking. He said, think. Don't be afraid to think. I want to invade your thoughts. Come out of the boundary of your doctrine and allow my love to take you deeper than what is written. I'm not talking about the revelation you can get from me. I'm talking about me. That's why our relationship with him is greater than what you learn. What you learn is important because that's the only way you're going to try to get up there. But the amazing thing is that people who have stopped learning, like they got it out. Been saved for 20 years. What's that, an hour in heaven? You know, what, what? <laughs> You're going to be so blown away when you leave this body. You're going to wonder why people are cre even cry. When you, when, you're going to wonder why people cry and carry on when you leave. You're going to figure out. First of all, there is no attachment you're going to want. There's no attachment you're going to want with this, with this earth, with this body. I had a friend of mine, his brother, uh, he, he flatlined for a minute. And when they bought him back, he was angry, crying. He said, I was there. I was there. I was there. Who he saw, y'all called me back. I was there. And he started cussing. I was like, whoa, where were you? <laughs> you only you only know you from the perspective of your physical human body. You don't know you from your relationship spirit to spirit. Wow. Yeah, you got to be careful with that thing, boy. You got you to be careful. You, you start praying, and you start praying in tongues. And, 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 you know, tongues is one of them things where you're like, oh, wait, wait a minute, what is this? Da, 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 da. Now, I'm, I'm going to tell you something now. I'm going to tell you something. I, 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 I double dog Dino dare you to take the next six months. I, I, I ain't even for 30 minutes, just every day, have some daily contact with God in tongues. So I'm going to change with you. You're going to start hearing stuff clearer. You're going to start seeing stuff clearer. But this is you in your personal relationship with God. I, 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 I owe not only a debt of love to you, but to him. I can't, I never be able to pay that. But I owe him the debt of love by paying it to you. Yeah. All right. Ooh, y'all still on the bus, y'all? Y'all with me here? <laughs> I know I, I, ain't been, I ain't been stressed out here like this for a minute, so. That, that's why a lot of stuff ain't going to matter to you. When you, when you start digging in this, a lot of that, yeah, that, that, that little boo-boo baby pamper stuff, that, that, you, ain't, you don't even know what, what, what? what? All right, look at uh, John 14, 6. Look at all of these keys. Look at all these 
about the deity of Christ. Look at what he was saying. We're never going to understand this grace and truth until we understand the preeminence over Moses, over the law, the nerve of us to try to even bring the law into competition with this grace and truth. Look at what he said. Jesus said unto him, I am the way. I am the truth. I, I, don't, I don't know what people are talking about. You, you, the, the, he, he says, I, I'm full of grace and truth. I, I, I'm grace. Grace is a person. I'm truth. You can't separate Jesus, grace, and truth. I'm the way. I'm the truth. And watch what he says. I'm the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I think I got a better understanding. I was thinking, well, here go Jesus, and I got to go through Jesus to get to the Father. Now, when I get to Jesus, I'm, I'm at the Father. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I, I, ain't, I, ain't, I ain't got to go find the Father. I, when I, I found that, I, I I I'm at the Father. So anybody, if you dismiss Jesus, you done dismiss the Father. And you get all deep and up, well, I don't believe in Jesus. Well, you, you, and, you, you and the Father got a problem because you have just dismissed him. You're trying to play this little carnal human separation game. We don't understand what real true oneness is all about. Whew. All right, look at uh, uh, John 20 and 31. I, I thought about trying to teach this, like, verse to verse, chapter to chapter. But it, it ain't nothing really like that. You know, it's just, I'm, I'm, we're going to just go and we're going to do this thing. And, and John's purpose in writing, he had a purpose. Why did John write this book? Why was he inspired to write it? He said, but these are written, these signs and miracles and healings are written that they might believe that Jesus is the Christ. So it says, I'm writing this so you can, you can believe because in believing you have life. In believing you have life and, and that life is, is eternal. So that he's talking about you have life and you have eternal life in believing. And this is John. This is not Paul. This is, this is John. Okay? Some, I, I saw some other day say, everybody hate Paul. You know, and, and theologians, they have a problem with the Pauline uh, writings. But then you see John the Revelator giving revelation of what Paul wrote. My God. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ Believe he's the Christ. Now, Christ isn't Jesus' last name. Christ is, believe he's the anointed one. Yes. Believe he's the son of God, and that believing you might have life, and you're going to have it through his name and through, through the, the name. If you go study the word name, it's authority. You're going to have life through his authority to give it. You believe, and you'll have life. We have life because we believe. Human beings don't think that's enough because you're governing things uh, as a person with an earth suit on while you ignore who you really are, uh, another speaking spirit. All right. Now, such a one God chose as the messenger to bring grace and truth. He was chosen to bring grace and truth to a rebellious and lost human race. He, he, he was chosen to bring grace and truth. <laughs> a gift to bring grace and truth to a lost and rebellious human race. No less a person could have adequately revealed the wonders of grace, for grace is the infinite love and kindness of God towards man. Grace is favor, but it is 
It is the, the unrestricted, infinite love. Who going to deliver that? Nothing that's created can, can hold the capacity of that infinite love and kindness. He's the only one. He's the only one that can deliver that. So now Jesus is really being made big in this teaching. And it's going to enhance your, your life of grace. Now, I need to take a little side road because we need to deal with something. The ministry of death, the ministry or the ministration of death versus the ministration of grace. So again, John is going to be constantly weighing out the pre or, or setting forth the preeminence of grace and Jesus above the law and Moses. You'll see that throughout these writings. So because life is inherent, is something that is in you, something that's inherent means it, it, it exists in you as a permanent, essential characteristic or attribute, something that's been, in, that's been vested in, it's been vested in you. And so life is, 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 is vested, it exists in Jesus. So it's, it, it's possible, it is possible for grace to reign unto eternal life because it exists in Jesus. Now that's not so with the law. Listen carefully. Moses was mortal. He could not be the bearer of that which gave life. Wow. There is no life-giving power related to the law. The life that was in the Word was the light of men. But when the law which the Bible calls, we'll look at it in a moment, what the Bible calls it the ministration of death. When it was given at, at Mount Sinai, did you notice what was happening when it was given? Thunderings and blackness and darkness. Look at Exodus real quick. When the law was given, I don't think people even recognize. Exodus 20 and 18, and I'll look at it in the, in the New Covenant as well. The ministration of death, that, that'll freak your grandmom them out. If you go tell your grandmama, and it's, it's right there in, 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 in Hebrews, the ministration of death. And I'll, I'll show you the whole thing in a minute. But look at what happened when it was given on Mount Sinai. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. There was nothing that made somebody wanted to go and check it out. They were like, shoo, what in the world? <laughs> And then look at Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 18. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 18. I told you this was going to be a series where I was going to take my time and we're going to cover every corner, every jot and tittle, every cross the T. He says, for you are not come unto the mount that might be touched and that burnt with fire, nor unto the blackness and the darkness and the tempest. He said, that's not what you've come to. You, you, you didn't come in grace hearing you touch that mountain, you're going to fall dead. You didn't come to that. You came to a liberty that came out of life. And so he who brought grace and truth, which is Jesus, is infinite in his being, in his person, in his works, because this because of this, there can, be, there can be no failure, no failure in the ministration of grace. No failure in the ministration of grace. A bunch of failure in the ministration of law. None in the administration of grace. Now, that's all, all I want you to hold on to right now. So now let's look at a living revelation of God versus a letter that's written on stone. A living revelation, I'm living, versus a written uh, laws on stone. So look at, uh, look at uh, verse 14 again in John chapter 1, verse 14. And the Word was made flesh. 
and dwelt amongst us, and we beheld, now this is the part people skip over, we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So grace and truth came by the word made flesh dwelling among men. It was a living revelation of God. It was a living revealing of God. It, it, Jesus was a, was a live, uh, you can see, revelation of God. When you saw Jesus, you saw the glory, my God. Uh, I need to bring it down to your, 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 in, in, your intelligence. It, it, the glory is manifested word. But I thought the glory was any word that was manifested, not saying that's completely wrong. I said, well, when you, when you prayed and got an answer, that's the glory of God. No, no, no. This is talking about Jesus, the manifested glory of God. You get to see glory that Moses, who was that, that they couldn't see? It was Moses, wasn't it? That he bypassed him and, 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 and he, he couldn't look at the glory and live. Oh, my God. You couldn't look at the glory and live. And then when Jesus came, you can look at, the, look at him right in his face. And behold the glory that men could not look at when he passed by. And what, he, what God said is, you can't see me face to face, but I'm going to let you see my back part. I'm going to let you see the residue. He ain't even there. He says, I'm going to let you see the residue of where I was. You can't handle where I am. Not yet. But I'm going to wrap myself up in an earth suit one day. Because I got a FedEx a package of grace and truth. It's all right if you got to listen to this sermon five, ten times. I'm wondering, boy, you ought to see the comments online right now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I told y'all, Jesus is coming. We, we, we listen, Rumpel Room School is over. We've been in this thing enough to allow God to help us go just a little deeper in this, and you can't see Jesus like you've been seeing him before. You got to see him. That's the glory. That's the glory. That's the glory. Hallelujah, that's the glory. Hallelujah, that's the glory. Hallelujah, that's the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was a living revelation of God. The law is but a letter. The law is a, it's letters written on what? Stone. That's what, that's what the law is. 2 Corinthians 3, I want you to see this in the NLT. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6 and 7. Let's, let's just, let's, let's, 2 Corinthians 3, 6 and 7. Uh, he has enabled us to be ministers of the what? New covenant. This is a covenant not of written laws. But this new covenant is a covenant of the Spirit. People don't get that. We're not talking about how many scriptures you know. That's important. We're not talking about how long you've been saying, how long you've been reading the Bible. That's important. We're talking about understanding the spirit, which l raises you above. You're still the created, but you're the created that's being influenced by the eternal. And, we, and, and we, we, we ignore the Holy Ghost like he ain't real. We, we really do. And the only way you, can, you have fellowship with the Holy Spirit, you've you got to engage that fellowship through prayer, through allow him, allowing the new creation to lead you into holy living. And then you encounter things like he, he said something to you and it happened in three hours or he told you to do that, and you did it. And, and, and it's like, 
what would happen if, if Christian people were spiritual people? See, we, we don't know it. What would, happen if, what, happen, what would happen if our lives were led by the Spirit? And you ain't ask nobody, well, what did the Bible say about drinking wine? You ain't got to ask that. Well, what did the Bible say about me having to forgive them? They hurt me. You ain't got to ask that. But if your life was Spirit-led and Spirit-fed, you would build the intuition on the inside of you to know by the Spirit. That's the ultimate place where God's trying to take us. He's trying to take us to life in the Spirit. And he said, I've made a covenant that is administered by the Spirit. And that's why so many people have a problem with the teaching of grace, because it contradicts a law-based flesh performance and says, yield to the Spirit, follow him. Yeah. And he wrote it on your heart so you know to know. You know to do because you don't know how you know to do. You just know he got in there and he started doing dictation in your heart and you just know to do. You just know to do. The old written covenant ends in death. But under the new covenant, the Spirit there it is, gives, come on, life. All right, now there we go. <laughs> life came from the Word, the Word became flesh, put on the earth seat, suit, then the Word and Jesus and uh, the Father are one. And the Spirit now doing the same thing they're doing because they all won. You keep trying to separate them to satisfy religious doctrine. But this covenant is Spirit-administered. The old agreement was administered by rules. 613 laws, take out the Ten Commandments, you got 603 rules <laughs> trying to get born into your life, morality into your life. And the old covenant was a rule-led agreement. Do this, 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 and this should happen, and it never did. And he told you at the beginning, I didn't give you this to give you life. The Ten Commandments were not given to give you life. All right, now, it was God's character. There's a lot to be said about that because you see the Ten Commandments in the New Covenant, but it's, the difference is it's being administered by the Spirit and not by rules. Whew. The old way with laws etched in stone. See, I got I to say something. Eventually, we're going to have to deal with it. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be a little light on it. But the 603 were in tablets. The 10 was the only thing etched in stone. The problem is that 10 etched in stone, that was perfection. Flawless perfection. That was God's character, glory, and essence in those Ten Commandments. Too much for you to handle. So the old way with laws etched in stones, and see, that's what I'm, uh, you know, led to death. That was the whole purpose, was to lead you to death. Though it began with such glory, so it started with glory, that the people of Israel, now watch this, it began with such glory that the people of Israel could not bear to look at Moses' face, started with glory, but see, Moses was a mortal, started with glory, couldn't handle it. Watch this. 
for his face shone with the glory of God, even though the brightness was already fading away. So under, the, under Jesus, we have eternal glory. Under the law, we have fading glory. It's fading away. And you know, that's what happened. Think about when we were under the law. We first got saved. We got under the law. Everything looked like it was pretty good. It started fading away. And we asked ourselves, are we still saved? But once you got under the grace of God, the grace seemed to be grace upon grace upon grace. And even in your rough day, the glory of the grace of God was still there. It still did something to you today as it did back whenever. Ooh, Jesus. Oh, Lord, I'm, I'm out of time, y'all. Uh, let me see. Let me see where, where I can stop. Uh, anything was so good. Piano man didn't even get on the piano. He was just sitting up there listening, but he got on the piano. Uh, let's see where we can end this. Um, uh, man. Man. We're just going to have to quit and pick up next time. Pick up next time, man. Oh. See, that, 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 that's what these Bible studies are for. You dig deep, and then you go back and read it, look at it, and then you, you step away. F you're the creation. And don't you dare try to relate to him. I, you know, here's what people do. Well, God like, you know, God just like a, 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 a man and a woman. Da, da, da. No, 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 no. God is not a man. God is not a man. He ain't going to lie. See, he, we want to make him like us. You're the creation trying to bring him into his creation. I tell you what, that word was so good tonight. Yeah. I need to go by Miss Winners. <laughs> I need to forget about this plant-based diet and go get me some fried chicken. <laughs> oh, I know y'all could do better than that. Come on, y'all, let's give God some praise with that word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know I wasn't the only one over there, face stuck, like, blowing my mind. Praise God, that was a good word. As I'm over there thinking about, we learning about, we're unveiling Jesus. We are united with that same I am. We are united with his spirit. We get the opportunity to be united with everything we just learned today. So at this time, if you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I'm going to be honest with you. If you haven't done this, you don't have a life. I don't care what you experience. I don't experience whatever good you're experiencing. You don't have a life until you receive Christ. And then what happens is you get all that he is. The Bible says that as he is in heaven, so are we. Everything that he is, we are, and we get to experience. It's experiential. So if you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord, say this simple prayer with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I realize that I'm a sinner. Right now, I repent for my sins. Come into my heart. Help me get to know you. I receive your life and I receive your spirit, and I declare today I'm saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, y'all. Let's give it up for those who got saved today. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you just prayed the prayer of salvation with me today, text the keyword I'm saved as one word to 51555. 
provide your name and email address, and we will send you a free ebook as a gift to you today. Get into a Bible-based church. It might as well be this one since you're getting fed, and get to know them. Amen? All right, y'all. At this time, we get the opportunity to worship God with our gifts. Amen? This is an opportunity for you to complete your worship. Remember what I told y'all last week? God is pleased when we do that. Listen to the word we just got received. Now we get the opportunity to say, you know what, Lord? Thank you for that word. I love you. Thank you for all that you've been, and I'm going to worship you with my gifts. Amen? It's a, it's, a, it's a love action. You love, he loved us so we can love him back. And this is an opportunity that we can love God back with our gifts and worship him. Amen? If you need an offering envelope, uh, uh, raise your hands and the ushers will get one to you. For those of you online, the ways to give, they're on the screen. Uh, you can text World Changers Space in the amount to 74483. You can call 1 866 477 7683. Or, of course, if you want to mail it in, you can do so at 2500 Burdett Road, College Park, Georgia. 30349, and if you want to give via web, you can do so at worldchangers.org or creflodollarministries.org. And if you want to use the QR code, you just simply put up your phone like you're going to take a picture. It'll send you a link. You click on that link, and then you can give that way. Amen? All right, let's pray over these gifts. You can raise them up. Father, this is our seed. This is our worship to you. Thank you for giving us seed to sow. Thank you for taking care of us. Thank you for unveiling yourself to us, Father. Thank you for our pastors, and thank you for the word that we just received. Thank you for protecting us. So we sow these seeds as our worship and our praise and our thanksgiving to you. We do it with gratitude and thanksgiving, and we thank you for your promise that it will go and grow. And we sow into your kingdom right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Ushers, you may receive the offering. Before we dismiss, I also want to mention that we are having corporate prayer this Saturday at 10 a.m. in the Junior High Building. So if you want to come and join us for corporate prayer, we're doing so every Saturday in the Junior High Building. Amen? All right, you guys can stand so we can dismiss. You can raise your hands real quick. I declare God's great grace and His love. It's going to infiltrate your minds and souls this week. I declare the best is yet to come in your lives. His goodness is running you over all this week. I declare that the angels have charge over you. The blessing of the Lord is making you rich and adding no sorrow with it. You will experience his grace like never before. This is the year of open doors. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless in the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to our only wise God. And Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen. You are dismissed. Y'all have a good night.